Has Fender jumped the shark? Hey everybody, Jace Allen here. Welcome back to the channel. So if you're not familiar with the term jumping the shark, <laughs> it is a term that uh, was created uh, for TV programs back when the TV series Happy Days was on the air. And the Happy Days uh, TV program was getting low ratings and so they decided to create a, an episode where the Fonz uh, jumped a shark on skis, on water skis. And so the term evolved from that. And so anytime somebody is doing something sort of over the top to continue their ratings or to continue their success, it is often called jumping the shark. So I'm beginning to wonder if uh, maybe Fender is uh, doing exactly that uh, with a lot of their latest uh, promotions and product releases and a couple things that we're going to talk about today. One of the most notable is probably the Squire debut by Fender, which uh, I did a review on a few months ago. And if you're not familiar with the Squire debut, it is a Squire uh, Stratocaster style. Well, they have a, a Telecaster and a bass also. And it is a super inexpensive guitar. I think it was $129. Uh, the Fender is selling directly to customers through Amazon. And so I think Fender has recognized that there is this very inexpensive guitar market right around the $100 range, $100, $150, under $200. And so I think they're trying to capitalize on that by coming out with this Squire debut. And it wasn't a terrible guitar, but there are so many other guitars in that exact price range from Amazon that I think are far better than the debut. So here's something that uh, is interesting that I got in my email uh, just a few days ago, and this is a, a Fender Acoustasonic uh, collection. They've had the, the Acoustic Acoustasonic guitar out for quite some time, uh, but they've released this signature version by Phineas. If you're not familiar with who Phineas is, he is... Uh, the brother of the pop singer Billie Eilish, and uh, he's her engineer, you know, her, her producer. He produced a lot of her um, songs, and they did one album uh, completely uh, in their home, childhood home in, in the bedroom, uh, with just off the shelf uh, consumer, uh, you know, recording equipment and a computer. And so now he's he's a big deal because of, of, of that. And so looks like Fender has teamed up with him to create uh, an Acoustasonic. And the thing that I found very interesting about this is that there are two models. One American made and one uh, made in Mexico. And if you follow my channel at all, you know that I routinely claim that the Mexican-made fenders are just the same as the American-made fenders. There's really no difference. I'm beginning to think that there's zero difference, that the only difference is one is made in Mexico and one is made in the United States, hence the difference in cost because simply because of the difference in labor. Um, I'm guessing they're using the same materials, the same hardware, everything. And I think this really supports my claim that they're the same guitar. Uh, so we have two guitars. This is the Acoustasonic. This is the player uh, edition. That's the one that's made in Mexico. And this is the American Acoustasonic. Right off the bat, I like the Mexican one better because I like the color of it. I don't like the pure white. Um, but other than that, there's not a lot of difference between these two just looking at them. And uh, so you take a look at the specs on these guitars and you come to find out that the body is mahogany. It's got a solid Sitka spruce top on it. Uh, polyester finish. Uh, neck material is mahogany. Fingerboard radius is 12 inches. It's, uh, the American model has an ebony fingerboard. Uh, tusk nut. Um, everything else is pretty much uh, the same. And then you get down to the 
electronics and it says three pickup configuration under saddle piezo internal body sensor n4 magnetic master volume blend knob five-way switch so then if you move on over to the player stats specs uh you see that it's mahogany solid sitka spruce neck is mahogany 12 inch fingerboard and this one has a rosewood uh fretboard so that's the only difference narrow tall frets same nut width same nut material same electronics two pickup configuration under saddle piezo n4 magnetic master volume blend knob three-way switch tusk nut all that stuff they're the same guitar except for the fretboard that's it fretboard wood uh ebony is uh, more expensive harder to come by uh, than the rosewood and one's made in mexico one's made in the united states so i think that really sort of speaks to uh fender's branding and how they're marketing their guitars uh and how they're staying profitable while offering you know guitars that are i mean they're pretty much identical so anyway i just kind of thought that was interesting uh let me know your thoughts in the comments uh i think that one looks really sharp uh, i've played a couple of these they're pretty nice guitars um i still prefer to play either an electric or an acoustic not a big fan of the sort of blended guitar because i've played this one and it really doesn't sound much like an acoustic when you play it in that sort of acoustic mode so so then the other thing that fender uh came out with just recently here is this uh certified pre-owned program so what that leads me to believe is that Fender is, I mean, they're being smart because they're diversifying and trying to find more avenues of revenue. Um, but it also tells me that, you know, that their maybe their new guitar sales aren't as good as they want them to be. And they see the used market on reverb doing pretty well. I don't think it's doing all that great this year. Uh, prices are pretty pretty low, um, but so they've they've sort of jumped into the used market. And they're calling it certified pre-owned, like like a car. And uh, what they're doing, I'm not sure exactly where they're getting uh, these secondhand guitars. Um, maybe they're returns. Maybe who knows what. And so they've created a reverb uh, page where you can go and buy these certified pre-owned instruments. And what they do is they get them in and they refurbish them and they do um, set up, it looks like, and everything. And they're calling them more affordable. <laughs> so if you go to their pre-owned shop and you look at something, say, like the uh, American Vintage 2, which I think is a gorgeous guitar, uh, they're kind of modeled after, this one modeled after the 1961 uh, Stratocaster. It's got the clay uh, fret dots and the little cutout here where the truss rod access is. And it's the truss rod that looks like a giant Phillips head on it. At least the originals do. I don't know if this one does. Uh, and then they got the, the heel plate with the stamped uh, serial number on it because that's what they used to do way back when and beautiful guitar so if you if you search for that model and they and they're saying that the original price for this guitar is around twenty three hundred dollars and theirs is about 1950 so you're getting what 350 dollars off which is isn't bad uh and free shipping uh but if you just kind of search through uh reverbs you know listings here you can see one for 1600 uh, i'm not sure what the and 75 shipping so that's reasonable so it's 1675 they're saying this is in excellent condition and it looks like it comes uh, with a case i don't know if the fender pre-owned come with a case um doesn't look like it so here you can still get a decent um you know a decent guitar for quite a bit less than than brand new just by buying from you know 
an independent vendor on Reverb. But Fender thinks that they're going to be able to compete, and I think they think that they're adding value by calling it certified pre-owned. You get a one-year warranty on it, 30-day uh, return. Uh, so I guess that's a great way to get into uh, a new Fender without paying new Fender prices. So anyway, I just wanted to touch on that. I thought that was uh, interesting, some interesting news uh, coming out of Fender. So let me know what you think in the comments. And if you haven't uh, subscribed already, please consider doing so. It really helps out the channel. I'm Jace Allen. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.